Hello, this is Ronnie Odom with Navigate Housing. Welcome to Wednesday's Wisdom. I'm here today with Jacqueline French. She's the Section 3 Coordinator with the Birmingham Housing Authority. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. So Jacqueline's going to tell us today about Section 3. Now, I know we all have heard that word or the, that phrase. Um, and maybe we're not sure what it means. So hopefully today we can let you know exactly what it means and how it benefits housing authorities to do the program properly. So Jacqueline, let's start with telling us what is Section 3? Well, Section 3 is a provision of the um, HUD Act of 1968. Um, it ensures that employment, training, uh, other economic opportunity, uh, such and also contracted, tr contracting, is um, afforded or is directed to individuals that are low to very low income, particularly those people who are receiving uh, any type of government assistance for housing. Mm -hmm. Also for those businesses who employ individuals that are low to very low income. Okay, so I think that's really wonderful. Um, we know that there's a lot of development going on in housing right now with RAD conversion. So this affords people who actually live in that community and work um, who live in that community to actually get an opportunity to work in that community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what are some of the activities you're doing at your housing authority with Section 3? Um, uh, right now we are in the middle of a uh, redevelopment project, uh, Loveman Village, um, which is a Section 3 covered project. So that's plenty of opportunity for our Section 3 residents. Um, Section 3 uh, is, is pretty much, it's very broad. So if you're a resident of housing, Section 8, receiving Section 8 assistance, you are automatically a Section 3 resident. So with contracting coming in, with a lot of uh, construction coming in, if there are job opportunities, which there are in construction mm -hmm. and with a project as big as this, there are some uh, job opportunities for our residents. Now Section 3 does not stop with our residents or Section 8 residents. It goes on uh, through Birmingham and Jefferson County. But the criteria is low to very low income and you must live in Birmingham or Jefferson County, or being a housing pub, a housing resident, or a section C receiving um, subs subsidies for Section Eight. Okay, so um, for those of us who don't live in Birmingham, because um, we have watchers from all over the country, so what is the geographic um, definition? Is it a low and moderate income area, or is it just under our MSA? How did how do you know? How far you can go out? Well, it's where, it's where the project is being done. Okay. For instance, if we, we are doing a Section 3 covered project in Birmingham, mm -hmm. it's in that, it's in that um, metropolitan area. Gotcha. So, okay. you know, that's, that's pretty much the gist okay. of it. Great. That makes sense. Um, I've been in housing for over 30 years. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> but I um, have written a lot of grants to HUD um, for properties. Um, for housing authorities, for nonprofits, and I personally am guilty of seeing Section Three and just sort of checking the box. Okay, yeah, we'll do this, but not really knowing what that meant. So tell me first, hit me on my hand, and <laughs> tell me why I was wrong. <laughs> well, you're right. A lot of people do. They kind of skate over Section Three, but Section Three is an opportunity for um, residents who may not have, may not get an, uh, a, just a, an a, um, opportunity any, any other way. It's an opportunity, uh, opportunity for them to receive uh, job training. It's an opportunity for them to uh, go into career, into careers. And HUD is re it requires our contractors to do that because with those, with those funds being expended towards um, all of these different op uh, opportunities for revitalization, construction, that is something that HUD requires of any recipient of HUD funds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I slapped your hand, but you know, you, you can really, HUD can slap your hand for exactly. not doing it as well, That's because exactly. it is a requirement, it's law. Mm -hmm. So, as my, for my, my job is to make sure the contractors, you know, that they look at Section 3, not only as, okay, what well, is a requirement, but they're giving back. They're, they're, they're affording um, people who may not have Get, may not get an uh, opportunity other in other places. Mm -hmm. They're they're giving them that opportunity to receive something that they they may normally not mm -hmm. receive. And you know, and if we look at the big picture, so we know that a lot of times in public housing communities, it is um, a situation where maybe the man can't find a job, 
or even the woman, the head of household, cannot find a job. So construction offers low skills so you can kind of get your foot in the door. And then sometimes you might be able to get an apprenticeship for a skilled job. And a lot of times they pay very, very well. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity to um, uplift our communities, um, uplift our tenants. And again, it, it is um, an opportunity for us to sort of stop, to abate the generational housing that goes on a lot. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, see, what else I want to ask you, Jacqueline? <laughs> I want to know why, why is it that some housing authorities feel like Section 3 is a burden to them? What is, it, what is actually required of a housing authority to comply with Section 3? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the housing authority that may feel as if it's a burden. Mm -hmm. um, as a, if, because we're a housing authority, we are required as well to employ a certain percentage of mm -hmm. Section 3 residents. Um, to be honest with you, it's an easy task for public housing. I know it's an easy task for, for our housing mm -hmm. authority um, because we do, we do promote um, employment to our Section 3 residents. And, and every year we have, um, we've, we've met those, those numerical goals. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that um, we, have, we have a lot of problems with maybe contractors not wanting to comply because um, of the barriers that a lot of our residents face mm -hmm. with employment. So as a housing authority and a Section 3 coordinator, I have to help our residents um, overcome a lot of their barriers, um, such as transportation, daycare. Those are there's a lot of things that would cause someone not to be able to fulfill a, um, a job. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily the housing, housing authority, but we do have some challenges when it comes to you know, some, some of our contractors. Right. And we all know that there are barriers to going to work. Um, you just don't roll up out of bed and, Absolutely. and get to work. You know, you have to have transportation, clothes, et cetera. Right. Um, and it also seems like to me that combining Section 3 or you, utilizing um, the FSS program in, in conjunction with Section 3 Absolutely. might be a good way of lessening some of those barriers. Mm -hmm. How do your programs work together? Um, Section 3 and FSS work together harmoniously. Um, we understand in the FSS program, they are uh, equipped with helping the residents become self-sufficient. So one of those goals is employment. So what better way to help a resident meet that goal is by, not, is by combining with the Section 3 program. Mm -hmm. So um, as a matter of fact, uh, next April we will be, uh, Section 3 and FSS will be conducting a, a job fair. And we do this uh, twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, this is, is open to all of our residents. If they need transportation, Section 3 provides it, uh, transportation. So does FSS. So we work, like I said, we work together harmoniously to, to uh, as for a common goal, and that is to help our residents be self-sufficient. Great. And tell us, how is um, Section 3 supported by your board and by your upper management of your housing authority? Well, my board is, uh, they, they hold Section 3, they hold me and Section 3 accountable uh, to, to administer what Section 3 is all about. Um, I have all the support I need from our, our President and CEO, Michael Lundy. He's, um, he's adamant, he's, he's, he's adamant about uh, our Section 3 program. Uh, could ever say that it's his baby. Okay. Um, so the support is there. Our board, they want, they're wanting to make sure that that our residents are uh, afforded all the opportunities from contracting, uh, from in, in entrepreneurship, um, any anything that uh, involves employment, anything that involves any type of opportunity to help our residents. They are um, on board. That's great. That is great. Um, it really cannot be done without the without the ED and the board being yes. on board. So that's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your program? Any success stories that you have? Um, well, we have a lot of success stories. I wish I had more success stories, but we do have, we have so many different partnerships. Uh, Section 3 partners with a lot of different um, agencies around the, uh, around the metropolitan and Birmingham area. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, um, we've had uh, some residents go on to training and once they finish training, They've um, been gainfully employed. We've had them move out of housing. Wow. We've um, we've had um, uh, had um, some of our employee. Uh, I'm sorry, some of our uh, residents 
to start businesses. Mm -hmm. We have uh, right now, Section 3 is looking to help any, any of our residents who are wanting to start, um, start a business. We're, help, we're trying to help them become a legitimate business, business license, the whole works. And from, from that, depending on that business that the, um, that the resident starts, there could be contracting opportunities with the housing authority. And that's something that Section 3 does give our residents who do want to start businesses. Mm -hmm. So we've had, um, we've had success stories with our residents starting businesses and then receiving contracts. Wonderful. That. And I've seen that throughout the country too. I've seen a lot of housing authorities that will help their residents become, you know, some of the easier businesses that are to start that are to start with, which is like lawn care, um, apartment turnover. Mm -hmm. Those are things that housing authorities have to have. Right. So why not bring up someone from within your own agency and then pay them to do it? Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Jacqueline. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you all so much for joining us. Jacqueline's information is, um, and my information are both attached at the end of this interview. So if you'd like to contact us, please feel free to do so. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.